This video takes a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the AOC 2481FXH. The OSD, rather strangely, is controlled by pressable buttons on the left side of the bottom bezel, usually they're on the right, which makes more sense for right-handed users. You can see on the underside of the bezel, the buttons are there, and there are little labels in white here. The first one is a source select icon. There's a left arrow, a right arrow, menu and power. There's also a power LED here, which I don't know how bright it'll look on the video, um, but it's actually really quite dim, It's um, which is good. It's certainly not obtrusive at all. I mean, you can look at it and see that yes, it is on uh, the LED, but it doesn't sort of distract you, even in a dark room, which is quite nice. If you press the source select button, you can cycle between the input sources. So there's VGA, HDMI 1 and HDMI 2. There's a left arrow, um, which controls the clear vision function of the monitor, which is a feature that increases the sharpness levels. You can have that off, weak, medium or strong. Even with the weak setting, the image does look overly sharp. Again, this probably won't come across on the video, but it looks really quite artificial and unnatural. Um, I don't see a point in actually using this feature when you're running the native resolution, but perhaps if you're running an older games console, for example, at a lower resolution, you might want to uh, use this feature to increase the sharpness, apparently increase the sharpness a little bit. Um, The left arrow controls the volume of the 3.5mm headphone jack and this is a very thin monitor. Um, since I'm doing this video I might as well show you just how thin it is. So if I go around the side you can see it really is very thin. It's uh, a bit thicker here because that's where the ports are at the, uh, the bottom bit here. But there's obviously no uh, no room for any speakers there or any sort of, for most users, pointless extras like that. So this just controls the volume of the 3.5mm jack and anything you've got connected to that. Next there's the main menu system itself, which is laid out in AOC's usual widescreen style. This uh, style hasn't actually changed since 2011, they even call it their 2K11 OSD system. Um, I mean, it, to be honest, it does the job and it's got some decent functionality. So there's uh, luminance first off, which allows you to control the contrast, brightness, eco mode, which is just um, a certain preset value for the brightness which you can select. That's all it that changes, just the brightness. So there's text, internet, game, movie and sports, all with increasing brightness levels. Or you can just set it to standard and then change everything yourself. There's three different gamma settings which are explored in the review. There's DCR, Dynamic Contrast Ratio, which is the dynamic contrast feature of the monitor, also explored in the review. And as you can guess, also explored in the review, is the overdrive setting, the pixel overdrive feature. And you can set that to weak, medium, or strong, or off. Um, the default is medium, I find this optimal, um, as noted in the review. Image setup, which is greyed out unless you're using a an analogue connection, so VGA or DSUB as it's also called, because using a digital connection this is all optimized for you automatically, so there's no need to manually adjust that kind of stuff. Next there's colour setup, and that allows you to, as you may imagine from the name, change the colour temperature. There are various different preset values. Warm, which is actually the default. Normal, which confusingly is not the default and actually looks quite cool. Cool, which looks even more cool. sRGB, um, which, as explored in the review, is actually just the same as warm. And user, which by default is the same as warm and sRGB. Very confusing, I know. But, of course, user also allows you to manually adjust the red, green and blue colour channels. 
um, and I've done that myself just for a sort of low blue light setting of sorts which I use in the evening and I explore that in the review as well just like everything else there's a DCB mode um, this is dynamic color boost I'm just gonna change this back to the warm setting um, DCB mode dynamic color boost it basically selectively oversaturates certain shades to kind of highlight them in the image so there's full enhance which oversaturates many shades or increases the saturation I should say of many many shades um, nature skin which does that for the red and pink shades green field which does it for greens sky blue for sort of blue shades and auto detect which um, seems to just be like full enhance really the greatest shade range um, the sort of natural look to the image if you like that kind of thing then keep it off I know some users do like over oversaturated colors um, at the expense of shade variety and a natural look so for example they might use NVIDIA Digital Vibrance that kind of uh, DCB mode is, is, is a similar kind of feature there's Picture Boost which is again quite a standard feature on AOC monitors and that allows you to control something called Bright Frame what this does is it puts a box on the screen which can have independent digital brightness and contrast levels set it doesn't change the backlight brightness um, and this monitor has one backlight controlled as an individual unit like like all current LCD monitors so you can't you know change the brightness of, of the bright frame area but you can change the digital brightness so I'll explain what I mean by actually showing you um, the frame itself so you can set the frame size you can just see in the top left there there's a bit of the image which just appears a bit different to the rest of the screen and that's the bright frame so it could be useful for highlighting certain uh, bits of the screen um, for example if you had a map on your game in the top left corner or something else like that and you can also change the horizontal and vertical position so you don't have to have it just at the corner you could have it in sort of the middle of the screen or down there or whatever you want next is OSD setup and that allows you to change the language of the OSD the timeout period which is how long it's displayed on the screen after the last button press before it automatically disappears um, I've got that set to 120 seconds so two minutes just for the sake of the video you can set that to various different values quite quite a lot of flexibility there ah 95 that'll do horizontal position vertical position of the OSD so where on the screen that's displayed there's a transparency effect transparency um, it's just what it says on the tin it allows you to adjust the transparency of the OSD system according to your personal tastes and there's a break reminder feature and if you turn that on after an hour it'll put a little message on the screen telling you to uh, consider taking a break and it'll do that every hour finally there's extra and that has some other settings you can manually select the input or you can have the monitor automatically select it for you there's an off timer feature and what that'll do is it'll turn the monitor off after a preset time in hours I think it, I'm not going to go all the way up, I'm fairly sure it goes up to 23 hours DDC slash CI, so some of the plug and play functionality of the monitor which allows you to control the OSD by software for example and that's enabled by default there's little reason to disable that even if you're not using it it uh, doesn't really do anything to leave it enabled and there's reset which allows you to reset everything to the factory defaults there's also just a little reminder there of the resolution and the refresh rate that the monitor's running at so there you go that was the OSD on screen display menu system of the AOC i2481FXH. Be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info.